Hey guys, Matt Price here. I wanted to share with you a real quick tip that I picked up in PowerPoint that I really feel like can elevate your presentations and really give you something unique during your breaks. Uh, of all things, one of the things that I struggled to find a good solution to do is when you're in person doing presentations, when you're doing new hire trainings, when you're doing lunch and learns, any type of in-person or even streamed session where you want to provide breaks for your audience, you know, typically you would just say, hey, we're going to take a 30 minute break. We're going to take a 15 minute break. Be back here at X time. Well, as we all know, you know, in the IT world, technically when you're taking breaks, that's when people are making calls and trying to close deals. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to tell somebody to be back in 45 minutes. And it's another thing to actually have a timer on the screen where those people can take a quick peek into the room to see exactly how much time remaining they've got before they need to be back in there and ready to roll. Whether it's a smoke break, whether it's stepping out to take calls, emails, etc. So ironically enough, something as simple as a timer seems like it would be very straightforward and easy to do. And, and clearly there are other alternatives. You can do it on your iPhone, your smartphone. Um, you know, your computer has a countdown timer that you could bring up. but one of the things that I really thought was was nice integration into PowerPoint is simply having the timer right in your slide deck. So not only does it remind you when it's time to take a break in the content, it also provides you a visual countdown timer so your audience knows exactly when they need to be back in the room. So again, something super simple, but hopefully you guys will find it valuable. So let me show you exactly what I've got here on the screen. So essentially what the timer is going to look like when it's live in action, let me just play it for you. So when you start the countdown timer, this is the actual animation. So fairly straightforward. It's a digital clock, right? You've got your minutes on the left, your seconds on the right. And in this example, this timer is counting down from an hour for 60 minutes. So typically this might be a lunch break counter. Now, one of the things that I did find online is there are a ton of countdown timer templates. Um, there's a ton of instructional, you know, four and five page articles about how to build one from scratch where you're literally creating circles, you're shading it, you're doing tons of different animations. So what I want to try to do is simplify that for you. So I've got that I'm going to be providing along with this video. The longest one that I built is 75 minutes. So hopefully you would really never need realistically a timer to longer than 75 minutes, I would say nine out of 10 times. If you do though, hopefully I'll show you how you can extend that. But the beauty of this is, as long as it's a break 75 minutes or less, literally all you guys have to do is delete the slides that you don't need. So for an example, this is a 60 minute break. Well, if we start at the, the beginning slide of 60 minutes, well, let's say we only need a 15 minute break. Well, I can come all the way down here, just select all the slides and simply delete those. And then we'll start from the 15 minute break. Now you might be asking, well, you can't really decipher the number. So how exactly do you know, you know, where it starts? So that's why I want to show you how it's built. So you understand what's going on behind the scenes. So the one good piece of news that you don't have to mess with is you never have to mess with the green digits. So the seconds, those are hard coded. Those are always going to be uniform. You know, obviously there's 60 seconds in a minute, so there's no reason to touch those. All they're going to do is count down 59 all the way to zero. So you never have to worry about those. Now on the blue digits, so you can see if we drag one of these digits down, you can tell that there's actually two numbers in each box. Now what you'll notice is this was a 60 second timer. So the first digit that you pull down is going to be what that is going to change to at its next interval. So in this case, once the green, you know, seconds go all the way down to zero, this particular slide is going to transition from 60 down to 59. And then the green is going to start over 59 down to zero. So what you do to build this is you would simply change the, the back number to what it was and then change this top layer number to what it's going to be. So when you reach the, the milestone, so when you go from say 60 minutes down to 
50 minutes down to 40 minutes and you've got those major jumps, you're going to change this left number. Now in the middle, so 61 minutes, 58, 57, 55, etc., you only have to worry about this one particular digit to modify. So it's real straightforward, it's real easy to change. And like I said earlier, hopefully you won't even have to worry about that because I've already built all this out. So all you've got to do is nix out the slides that you don't need to hit the exact amount of time you're trying to go for. Now, the other thing that, that I added in here is a couple of start and end slides. Now, the way that you modify this is if you click on the very top slide in the template, you'll notice under layout, we've got a lot of different just, you know, generic graphics that you can use as a pointer to where the timer is going to start and what happens when the timer expires. So in this case, you know, I've got be right back, right? But there's all kinds of things you could do. You could do time for a break if you just need something real quick and easy. Uh, you might do coffee time, you know, if it's a morning session or maybe it's a 2 p.m. afternoon session where you want to give people a little bit of time to go grab a coffee and, you know, get back in it. Uh, it might be time for lunch. Right. If this is going to be a longer extended break, um, you know, break button, etc. So a couple different options there just to tweak it. Um, now, also at the end, the very last slide, same thing. And it could be something as simple as session starting now. You know, if you're just ready to be blunt and say, hey, let's get back in your seat. Let's go. You might also do something like stream starting soon you know maybe this is an online session and again you know i find this just as valuable for online as in person because the whole idea is you want to give your audience something to visually refer to to know exactly when they need to be back rather than relying on them to look at their watch and get back on time there's a couple of others you know that we threw in here so you know stream starting soon if you like that theme um, you could also say, hey, it's go time, you know, and another one that we tossed in here is, you know, kind of please stand by, just throw a little comedy in there. So the idea is you can tweak that however you want. And in order to do that, the way that you modify the template is if you click on the very start session where the actual countdown timer lives and you open up your animations and bring up the animation pane. OK, so when you click on the slide in the animation pane, Essentially, what you're going to have the ability to do is go to one of these layouts, drop down and hit view layout. Now, when you view the layout, notice here on the left, you're going to have all the different graphics that we talked about. So essentially, you never have to mess with what's at the top. This is simply showing you what you've currently got selected for your start and end slide. But really, down here below under this number two, this is going to be where you can tweak and modify graphics. So if there's a specific graphic that you want to use to insert into your PowerPoint that says, hey, this is when the break starts, and this is the graphic I want to throw up when the break ends, all you've got to do is come down, right click, insert layout. You can either you know use plain text or you can just remove the text if you prefer, and then just drop in your graphics and then they're going to show up when you right click and go to layout earlier like we did. So honestly, that's really the only tweak you'll ever need to do. Then you can close the master. And again, if you needed to modify the start, right click layout and here's all your options like break time, 15 minutes, something real straightforward. Now, the other thing is, you know, obviously this is what 64 slides. It's not really efficient to take a 64 slide timer and throw that into a PowerPoint deck that could already be 60 slides, 100 slides, whatever. So what you can do is if you go to file, you save as, you literally can just save this as any PowerPoint document, just a PowerPoint presentation. Save it like we're just going to throw this out here on the desktop and we'll just do test. That way we don't overwrite the, the one that we've got. Now, let's say you want to import that into an existing PowerPoint. So if we bring up another PowerPoint that I've been working on and I've just thrown up this green break slide just to know that it's time for a break, we can literally go to insert. We can go to object and create from file. Then you simply hit browse, locate that file, which is test timer and hit OK. 
Now, here's the thing that I've learned about this that can be a little tricky. So I'm just going to give you this as a, you know, as a heads up. Whenever you're, let's say we were on this last slide, right, and we're advancing and it says break time. If you notice, and hopefully the video picks it up, notice how right now I've got a mouse cursor. And when I click, it's still a mouse cursor, but then it turns to this little hand to actually click on something. What can happen is if you're scrolling, you know, if you're advancing your slides and you don't wait long enough, you can skip right over it. So what you want to do is when you hit the break, you're going to want to click using that hand and that actually activates that nested PowerPoint, if you will. Then you're going to hit enter, click once more, and that's when it's actually going to start the embedded PowerPoint. So again, just, you know, a quick tip, make sure you don't skip over it because it does work, but you have to click on it, you know, kind of load it as a sub, you know, sub nested PowerPoint, if you will. And then it does whatever you told it to do. And then at the end, you know, it's going to advance just like it did previously. And of course we could skip through all this if we wanted, get all the way down to zero. I'm not going to waste your time doing that, but you get the idea. Once you add it in as a nested, you know, break, uh, break time, countdown time or whatever you want, it's only going to take up one slide. And that to me, that makes it very useful because you can tweak what you want, just drag it in as an object, put it where you need a break and you're done. So hopefully you guys have found this useful. Again, it's one of those incredibly simple things. Hey, it's counting time. It's not like this is new, right? We've been doing this for thousands of years, but for whatever reason, finding a countdown timer for integration into PowerPoint, I mean, people are charging for these things. It boggles my mind why something so simplistic is not literally insert into PowerPoint countdown timer. Seems like it would be something very straightforward, rudimentary, but it's not. So hopefully you guys found some value in this. If so, make sure you comment below, share, and thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.